What's up everybody, welcome to a brand new series on Football Manager 18. You join us for the journey and we've just stepped off of a 29 hour flight for the beginning of what I hope will be an epic kind of adventure. We are here in Port Villa, the capital city of Vanuatu, a tiny island in the South Pacific known for frankly absolutely nothing. Um, we are managing and we've been invited to come and manage Shepherds United in the Port Villa Premier Division which is you know one of the giants of world football and we're going to go on a, a bit of a long journey a bit of an adventure I want to try and turn this club into one of the giants of world football before you laugh I think you'll agree we've got the perfect basis now I'll go through all of the uh the fun stuff of interviews and meetings and whatnot off camera but as you can see they've given us an almighty wage £450 a week which is just ridiculous um, let's, let's learn a little bit about this club so we're at Shepherd United uh, they're a semi-professional club they as I said play in the Port Villa Premier in uh, Vanuatu um, you might be able to see it because apparently my screen has decided to go all weird. Um, we play at a five th the 5,000 capacity Port Villa Municipal Stadium. Let's, uh, let's have a look at our facilities. And they're magnificent. Owned by the council. The stadium is falling to bits. Um, the pitch is barely a pitch. We've got basic corporate facilities which probably just means there's a guy making prawn sandwiches out of a van. Um, training facilities, well, wherever you can kick a ball, and youth facilities, I presume we're using the local primary school, um, but not very well because we're not doing much junior coaching or recruitment. So that's going to be interesting. Let's look at the, uh, let's look at what's going on here. So we're known as the white and black, which is fairly obvious because we play in white and black. It's creativity at its finest. Um, we have no rivals. We have no derbies. Finances are okay, the owner loves the club, and ticket prices, frankly, are a steal, £7 a match, and the cheapest season ticket in the world. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look at the history, see what we can find. We've won the first division, which is the division below this twice, um, and somewhere here it should tell me when, but probably not, so we won't cry over it. Um, we are not affiliated with anyone, we'll probably try and look into that because we're going to need the players um, spoiler alert um, let's look at the Premier Division, so there's 8 teams um, the rules of this, league, of this league, one of the reasons I really enjoy playing it it's um, standard 14 games, everyone plays each other twice so it's a nice quick season sorting rules exactly as you expect can't play any trialists, five subs, three three used. You'll see the prize money is only from fifth to eighth place because the top four teams qualify for that champions playoff where there's still very little money but it's a lot better than this. Um, and the top two teams qualify for the Oceania Champions League, which I'm fairly certain is gonna become the most prestigious competition in the world. Uh, quite strict disciplinary rules and transfer windows more or less as you'd expect in Europe so let's go to the teams now total holders are Ifira uh, I know nothing about them other than they play in yellow and green so they're just essentially Norwich called Ifira Blackbird which would make you think they'd wear green wear black rather than green but what do I know and um, yeah that championship winning squad it's, it's a strong one let's look at some of the other teams in the league uh, from playing this league in the past from sort of go, having played it on previous versions I um, I know Amicale are one of the biggest teams I don't know if I've pronounced that right and I'm sure no one will correct me because the chance of anyone from Vanuatu watching this are incredibly slim um, but they they have it as you can see they've got an Italian manager um, Mauro Bertoni who I assume has achieved something somewhere he was under 19s and 18s manager at Cremonese played for Cremonese 
and some teams I've never heard of. So clearly one of the giants of management we're going to be taking on. Um, let's, look at, let's have a look at their, their squad. So you'll see they've got a lot of players from overseas. They've got Italian players, they've got Fijian players, Serbians, Scots, Swiss, Argentines. It's a decent squad. Um, let's have a look at some of their Italians. Now I've got, I've got the Fog of War on um, purely because I enjoy that little bit of extra challenge. I know a lot of YouTubers would rather rather see it, but I'm I'm a bit old fashioned now. Mauro Burcio, uh looks decent. Um, <laughs> spent some time in Syria with Bari. Um, never played, but I'm sure he he must have been decent to get there. Played in Malta as well. He's he's been around. He's been around. I'm sure he's going to be um, difficult to put goals past. Um, his backup, the Serbian Marko Miljojevic. No way, no idea if I pronounced that right. I'm, I'm too tired to care. It was a long flight. Um, he's played in Albania. He's played in Serbia. He's played for no clubs I've heard of. Um, but who knows? Maybe maybe he's special too. Um, you got Francesco Perrone, centre about eighteen years old. How, don't know how he found himself here, but there he is. He's been here a while. Um, presumably somewhere in Italy is missing a child, and he turned into a centre back. Um, they've got a Fijian international, Samuele Kautoga. Um, four caps so clearly a key part of their squad he's been to Australia and that's about the extent of his footballing expertise Colin Marshall's the name a few of you might know um, 32 years old Scottish he's played for Air he's played for Dundee Stranra Forfar Cowdenbeath essentially just been around the Scottish lower leagues he had a brief spell with Aston Villa at the beginning of his career He's he's going to be decent. I mean, he's been to Japan, Iceland, Spain. He 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 probably knows what he's doing. Um, anyone else that needs pointing out really here? Um, Rijat Schala, which sounds like the most Swiss name I've ever heard. Thirty three years old. Again, he's played in Italy, Serie A, Serie B, Serie C one. Played for Cagliari, Grasshoppers. Lugano, it's played for, some, played for some fairly big teams, Foggia when they were languishing a little bit. So these guys really, if only by virtue of having players, are going to be the guys to beat. Um, Miguel Magnoni, again, lots of time in Italy. And then you've got their left winger as well, Antonio Violi, 22. Again, probably just stolen from some Italian family who are wondering where he is um, so again they're, they're, they're quite a big deal uh, aside from the, aside from the league you'll find we've also got the division below us which is kind of important um, these teams will be the ones that come up go down um, keep an eye on Spirit away. They, I know in the past they've been up into the Premier League they might do something this season. We have the Port Vila FA Shield, which starts in December. It starts you know quite late on the season. Um, teams split into groups, as you can see, and then presumably top two go through into quarters, semis, etc. Um, we also have the PVFA Cup, which is, as the name suggests, their version of the FA Cup in Vanuatu. Um, We've got we've got quite a nice draw. Um, Tapuji and Merit are one of the better teams. They're the current holders of the competition. They're in our division. They're going to be quite strong, despite apparently having no players. You're going to see a theme develop here, um, because I don't like telling the game to create players for me. 
but it's the same format. Top two teams go through. Teams from both divisions come into this. And I think some low, some non-league teams go through as well. Uh, come into the competition as well. Um, top four quarterfinals plus. It's got a weird schedule this one. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that in detail once we get going with games. Um, so those are the cup competitions. Let's uh, let's have a look at our staff. Yeah. So our staff is me, and as you'll see, I'm not the best coach. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. Um, we'll make it work. We'll make it work somehow. Um, in case anyone's wondering about the massive languages spoken thing, yes, I I speak those. I'm sorry. Um, we'll start a coaching course in a second, I'm sure. Um, so we've got the contract. So again, £450 a week. We're part-time. Um, the club is semi-pro, and there's going to be a fairly big compo payout if anyone decides to try and steal us. Um, Finance-wise, fifty grand. It's not great. Um, we're going to transfer a budget of £5,000. It's going to be very hard to spend that. A wage budget of seven thousand two hundred, which you know, I think we'll make the best of. Um, let's look at the most the most important part. Let's have a look at our squad. So, yeah, you know, when you get asked to manage a team, kind of the basic thing you expect is that there will be a team. Um, we inexplicably have a greyed out English player who I'm just going to offer a contract to on the basis that it'd be nice to see someone who speaks the same language as me. Um, <laughs> he's going to be terrible. Um, in fact, let's have, a, let's have a look just so we can see how terrible he really is. Yeah. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. I'm sure it'd be fine. Um, so that's that's basically the rundown. Obviously we're going to need some players so we can have a quick look here just to see if there's anyone at all we can sign. There's one guy. 7 teams need players in this league. There's one player. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go on a bit of a manual scouting mission um, between now and the next episode, so we're going to come back and have a bit of a transfer special. Um, because just, just to outline kind of what I want to do, um, we'll see there's some friendlies there, some cup. I want to try and win this cup. This cup is winnable if we can find some players. Um, in terms of competitions, what I want to do is, you'll see the Premier Division is the... Forget the con the continental repu the continental reputation. It doesn't look too bad. Um, if I can find the world reputation of this league, if I can remember how to find the world reputation of this league, talk talk amongst yourselves whilst I whilst I have a look. Um, So these are the competition rankings for the entire world. And uh Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, we're we're down there. We're down there a little bit. We're we're, we're way down there way down there. Sorry, right, but we'll find out in a second. It's okay. We can't be far below the German third amateur the Belgian third amateur division. 
we really can't be far below the French under 17. Oh, we might have gone too far. I found the National Soccer League. Let's go back up just to make sure we're actually on the list somewhere. Yeah. Anyway, so we're 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 down here. We're down here somewhere. We definitely have a league. I just can't find it. Although, in fairness, I've just seen the note. There we go. There we go. So we're just below the Indian National Football League, um, which is not too bad. Um, and we're above the Singaporean. We're above the French National Three. So. Yeah, we're up there. I mean, the nearest recognisable league is the Danish second division above us. And... Yeah. So, we want to try and get up here. We want to try one of the big leagues. That's going to take a lot of work, it's going to take a lot of time. Um, but we, I, I think we can do it. I think, we, I think we're up to this. Uh, let's if it'll play. Let's have a look at the national team. The national team are incredibly highly ranked as you can imagine. 175th in the world, equal 175th in the world. Um, I'm sure it could be worse. It can definitely be worse. So we're equal with St. Lucia, Tahiti. I think Tahiti got to the last Confederations Cup so that's not too bad. It's, there's, there's potential. Not a lot around us. So, what we're going to try and do, I'm going to try and recruit from all of the teams around us as best I can, um, the national teams, because there's bound to be one or two players. I've got I've got all the national players loaded. So there's bound to be one or two players who can maybe come in and help us out. Um, but, yeah, so we're going to come back. Um, around the beginning of the PBFA Cup for the Yatel and the Mariki games. Mariki games on TV, but we're not going to get any money from it, so that's worthless to us entirely. Um, hopefully I'll have signed some players by then and hired some staff and solved all of our other problems and we'll have a team to put out. Um, thanks for joining me for this episode, I uh, hope you'll come and join us again for the next one. Please do like and subscribe, smash those buttons because then you'll find out first when I put things up. Um, if you feel like hitting the description you're going to find links to the usual things Patreon, Amazon wish list, uh, all, all the stuff YouTubers use to beg for money. I'm I'm not immune to that. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy the outro with its magical happy music, and uh, I will see you guys next time. Bye.